There we go. Recording has started. There's the red button. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Present the desktop. Present. OK. And close that desktop. OK, welcome to this month's Ag Communication Webinar. We assume it's working since we can't see it. So glad to have you all on. I'm Becky Koch. I'm the Director of Ag Communication. And today I am very pleased to have Diane Ness, who is the Print and Copy Services Customer Service Manager, and Sharon Lane, who is the Distribution Center Manager. To be honest, probably all of you out there already know them. So we're very glad to have them helping out today and they can answer the questions. So just for starting out, first of all, if you have questions, since we can't see a chat, chat, bleh, chat pod, please speak up. Don't be shy. You're among friends. Go ahead, interrupt us. Wait a minute. I have a question about that. We want this to be a discussion, but it's a little bit harder to do since we can't see it, since we're looking at our slides. So please go ahead and if you put something in the chat pod, we'll get to it at the end, but go ahead and interrupt us and ask your question, please. So what we wanted to start with is, first of all, Diane just explaining to us the difference between first class and bulk mail, because you all have some options when you do some mailings. Our goal here is, as we marketed it, to help you save money. So Sharon, or sorry, Diane <laughs> will explain a little bit about the difference between first class and bulk mail for us. Sure, thank you, Becky. Um, there is a first class mail, which is what we send out from campus. And there's also a bulk mail, which has more requirements and has a better rate than the first class mail does. There are some requirements that you have to have at least 200 pieces. They should be identical. And they can be letters, flats, postcards, whatever, but they all should be the same piece. They should all be letters or flats or whatever you're Not mailing. should be, must be. Must right? be. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank you. yes, thank you. That is yeah. true. They have to be. And that will run about half the cost of a first class meal. And I will determine whether you can even get a, a non profit rate, which is even less than just your regular bulk rate. And both of those are quite a bit less than first class, running maybe about 20 cents a piece, depending on where it goes. So that's that's the bulk piece. So I'm the dummy who can always ask these yeah. questions. And I think you've explained this to me before. But first class, if I have a bad address, it'll come back and tell me that, right. oh, my Christmas letter didn't arrive. Aunt Sue must have moved. Correct. Where with bulk mail, yes, I don't get it back if it's a wrong address. Is that correct? No, because in the bulk mail process, uh, you would send me a mailing list, and then I run that through the software that I have, which will make those corrections and will also um, kick out any duplicates, um, things like that. So you won't get those mailings back because they should be accurate because it it checks it against the national databases of addresses. So yes, so. that was a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the answer to that. But I'm it's, sorry. It, no, no, that's OK. Mm -hmm. Because the software is amazing to me. The way yeah. I've watched, yeah. bleh, I've watched Diane do it, and it just spits out international addresses that don't fit the system or right. way back when we still had rural route box whatever it would spit out all of those and say you must have a street address or whatever obviously yeah. we don't have too many of those anymore right. I'm showing my age so yeah. what you see on the screen you get the concept I realize you can't read this but it shows how mm -hmm. Right, it, it will correct the addresses, and even if there's like a secondary address, it will also pop that in into the spreadsheet. Like you can see, there's a primary address, there's a secondary address, as well as city, state, zip, and it will correct whatever's not deliverable on your list that you've given me. So if I want to do a newsletter or something, what format do you need those addresses in? It'd be nice to have them in Excel. That's the way we can take them and import import that into the, the software. And, and it I looks, can always send that list back to you after we process it. And so you'll have the list corrected if you need to use the same list again. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's 
fields name and address and city, state, and zip separate, correct. correct? Yes, and what it also does is if you don't know the four the zip four address, you know, like every zip code has a, a four digit, it will pop that in and put that in the list too. It doesn't show it on this spreadsheet, but it does do that. To be honest, that's what amazed me the most when yeah. I watched you do this. It's like, yeah. oh, cool, it can put in all the zip plus fours right. from the address. I don't know if any of the rest of you have ever gone to the USPS.gov mm -hmm. website, but you can type in an address right. and it'll give you the zip plus four. And so all those are in the database. So it added the plus right. four because at the end of after the list has been processed and pre-sorted using the software with the correct addresses now, it will generate a barcode. So when we print the document, we will put the name and address on there with the barcode, and that facilitates getting it through the post office as quickly as possible, and, and there's no sorting that they need to do because it's just all machine, it's machinable then, it all goes through. And that's obviously how we save money because mm -hmm. the post office doesn't have to do it for us. Correct. So here's an example of a plant pathology. This is a big envelope, obviously, not right. a number 10. So right. it costs a little bit more to mail still, right. but still probably half the price is if mm -hmm. it wasn't bulk and yes, pre-sorted and everything. Correct. That may run maybe 28 cents a piece. Depend there again, depends on the weight of the piece mm. and where it's going. Mm -hmm. And... Um, <clears throat> Once that's generated, then we bundle it for post office, and it goes out usually the same day we address it. Okay. And if I may oh, just add, just yes, uh, something like that that would go first class, it would be at least a dollar an envelope. Whoa. Right. So you would save significantly by okay. doing a right. bulk mailing. Right. And not all bulk mailings have to be in an envelope. We can do self-mailers mm. where it's just folded, and then we take care of prepping it properly so it will... Um, be eligible for the nonprofit rate mm -hmm. or the bulk rate. So, just in case you are aren't familiar with this, like I have certainly learned from these folks, is you have to have the fold a certain place and you have to have the tabs certain places, right. and the post office is really picky. Yeah. So that's bundled, why bundled a certain way, bundled yeah. a certain way, rubber banded just right. Correct. So mm -hmm. that's why it's just my opinion but it's certainly a lot easier to just have them deal with it and it'll still save you money in the long run and you don't have to deal with it mm -hmm. one other thing that diane mentioned is i noticed this one is nonprofit in addition to being bulk and many of our mailings qualify for nonprofit, but not all of them we're not going to get into the details right, right. but again but, diane knows how to figure that for you yeah i can i'll work with you and get the right rate that is the most economical to mail. So I know some of you work with local printers or do your own printing, which scares me on our little local copy machines, but we can, in print and copy services, do the actual printing for you. And then this is Diane's infamous addressing machine that wasn't going when I took a picture yesterday, but it puts those barcodes and everything on there so it does save you that money. Yes. Mm -hmm. So any questions about first class versus bulk? And again, I just want to emphasize from my learning point of view that I always thought, no, I don't want it to go bulk because I won't get the bad ones back. But now There's, with the yeah. software, that is not the case. So I go, why would somebody not go bulk if they have at least 200 pieces? Mm -hmm. Because it saves you so much money. Mm -hmm. And even before it goes, you know you've got the right addresses. Correct. Yep. And I can also send the list back to the user um, that would like to see the list after it's corrected. And um, it does kick out a duplicate listing also. So you can know if you have duplicates in there. So, but it doesn't send duplicates anyway. So. Okay. You know, I might have misspoken though. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. The name may have changed. So the bulk mail will go to that address, but right. if somebody else moved into that house, right. it would be delivered to that house. Right. It's focusing on the address to make okay. sure that the address is correct. It, it doesn't necessarily look at the names. So if I mail it first class, 
to Joe Blow at this address, but now it's Susie Smith at that address, then it would come back. Right. Okay, so that is the difference. Okay. So you have to decide if the investment is worth it. Right, I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We hadn't practiced that part, but we answered it. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, any questions for Diane about mailings? Please open up your mics since we can't see the chat pod. Any feedback? No? Okay, well, we'll go on to the next part. And Sharon's going to talk a little bit about business reply mail because, to be honest, I didn't even know what this was. Thank you. Um, very often, and many of you have seen the business reply mail, you'll see it in maybe uh, mailings that come to you uh, for maybe registrations for something or attend, uh, subscriptions are really good with that if you want a new magazine, something like that. But these, this is designed so that the mail that goes is sent out with the postage is paid by the sender. So when it goes to the recipient, they don't have to put a stamp on it. They don't have to put their uh, uh, mail it out. They, they can just send it right back and the postage is already paid for. Um, if, you put a, if you put stamps on it yourself, you want to make sure that all of your returns is, are going to be quite high because otherwise you're spending that 50 cent stamp on nothing um, coming back. Um, very often they'll take the stamp and put it on another piece of paper. But um, this is a, a business reply envelope looks like this and they do come in different sizes. This is a letter size. They also can be done in flats as uh, some of the uh, other information comes back. It depends on who is sending it, what kind of information they're sending it back. Uh, this one shows you the driving survey. And um, Deb Tanner does the design work for this public for the envelopes. It is designed so that each one of those little lines means something. And um, you know you do have the investment that uh, the printing of the envelopes, but then that envelope you, it doesn't make a difference if you're going to send out one. Or you're gonna, you know, if you've got maybe a half a dozen people you want to send out something to get back to see if they're going to come to a meeting or a training, you can send those out. And then they can come back to you one by one. Um, we have the only permit on campus that I am aware of that may that may not be correct, but as as far as I know that we do. So we do have many different areas that are using our, our permit. And because of this, we have a Deb designs the envelope. It has to be approved by the uh, post office to make sure that it does meet all the requirements for the business reply. Uh, mailing and um, so the permit and the address and everything comes back to us. We do have it flagged for whoever the report is coming back to. For instance, the driving survey is coming back. When it comes back, then I do the accounting for it and then I ship it on or campus mail it or ship it to the recipients of those mails uh, pieces. We don't go into them or anything. We just band them together and send them over to who should be getting those. There is a cost to doing that, however. Um, and there is a fee that we have to pay yearly, which is a permit fee as well as a maintenance fee. So it does get to be a little bit costly to do that. So when that comes back, it is charged at a dollar, or excuse me, the, the first class postage rate plus service charges. And so what we are doing, we are had, feel we had to do is charging a dollar on every letter that comes back. Um, that still is saving money on anything that is not returned and uh, seems to make it worth. Now, if it's a heavier piece of mail or a different shape of mail, then the charge will be adjusted to that. But the minimum is a dollar on return mail. And like you said, Sharon, that sounds like a lot, but yet if you mail out a thousand surveys and only get 200 of them back, you're by far saving in the long run. Right. And I know, like me, just the pain in the rear to go find a stamp if somebody doesn't provide me a stamp and Yes, guilty. Just yesterday, I got something in the mail. They provided the stamps. I took them off and saved them. <laughs> and just so I don't sound even more stupid than I am, I knew what business reply was. I just didn't realize it was called that. I remember saying to Sharon, so you mean it's like the self-addressed stamped envelope, but without an actual stamp on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I went, okay, now I get it. So, so business reply mail is the official name that I went, what are you talking about? Right. So, but we obviously all get these 
and know what they are when right. donations and magazine subscriptions, like you said. But mm -hmm. for our purposes, I would say they're used mostly for surveys and yes. athletics uses it for donations <laughs> and other groups right. on campus sure. to sure. send back your check. There's many. So, you know, I think for like um, the College of Ag, when they have the scholarship luncheon, they send out to all of their people. And so to get their, their luncheon counts, that oh, they send RSVPs. it all. The, yeah, oh. the business reply. So then, they, then that gives them, I think people are more encouraged to just, and that just comes as a postcard. So they just um, so process yeah. it and send it back. You know, fill it out, send it back, and it comes back to them that way. Great idea. And there's no minimum number on this, nope, right? Nope. Okay. Super. Thank you, Sharon. So I'm going to stall for just a second if you want to jot down phone numbers or email addresses for Diane and Sharon. But otherwise, we're going to go to live and have some more discussion and answer questions. So what questions do you have that they can answer? Because I can't. You guys are sure being quiet today. So I don't remember how to vote on this. There's a way to do it, but that's okay. So have some of you used, how, how are some of you using bulk mail? Do you have enough? Go ahead and type it in or speak up, either one. No, we've cut off Sharon. Oh, <laughs> there we go. So, are some of you using bulk mail? Do you have at least 200? I see where some of you are from, and it's some of the smaller counties, so some of you may not have 200 to do bulk mails. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> not using it? Okay. Do you see a possible opportunity, especially if? Diane can run the addresses through. Don't have enough. Yeah, right. that's that's the kicker. You mm -hmm. have to have 200 of exactly the same piece. We can't combine it with anything else. Okay, so several of you say not enough for bulk. Hmm. Well, I wish we could help you. Do you work with others in your courthouse or anybody like that to get some discounts with pre-sorted? working with an outside firm. For example, all of NDSU's mail, and I realize that's a lot different than your counties, but all the NDSU mail gets put together and a company runs it through some software and sorts it. So we only pay, as Diane said on that very first right. slide, 47.3 cents instead of, is first class 49 or 50, 50. now? 50. That's what I was going to say. I don't even know what no, it is. My stamps 50. just say forever. So so that doesn't sound like a lot, less than three cents each, but all the mail that goes off of this campus, it adds up. Your mail machine gives you a discount. Okay. Because Is that because it's the metered mail so that you get that extra penny off on it because it's cheaper if you use the meter rather than a stamp? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So I don't want to get into this, Candy, but do you have to pay a lot for your machine? Because we got rid of our machine because it was so expensive to rent the machine. It wasn't paying. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to check that out. <laughs> or if it, maybe it's for the whole courthouse rather than just your office or whatever. But yes, those of you who are on campus, you got the email about please run your regular first class mail, not packages. We have to clarify that. Packages still need to come here because we ship those and we didn't even get into Speedy and right. FedEx and that kind of thing today. But for you campus people, it's a heck of a lot cheaper for you to send your packages over here rather than following our directions. <laughs> yes. yes, don't do as I do, do as I say or something like that. Yeah. But the regular just number 10 envelopes, those are the ones that should go straight to the NDSU system. Right. There's no right. reason for them to come here first. But anything else, why don't you still send it here first, even flats, which right. to us normal people, flats, unlike how they define it, flats to us are just big envelopes. 
Right. So they call them flats. We call them big envelopes. Uh, so <laughs> these people yeah. who know what they're talking about. So anything else, the big envelopes even, I would say still probably send over here so we can decide if it's cheaper to put it in a county box that's going Wednesday or right. or go speedy or something like that. Because a lot of packages, the first month we were kind of figuring it out and a lot of packages got sent over to mail mm -hmm. directly and we can save extension even though your offices aren't paying directly we can save extension a lot of money by shipping packages by speedy or UPS instead of US Postal Service mm -hmm. have some of the rest of you come up with little tips and tricks to save money on postage besides do email instead of postage? Just so you know, we are exploring some systems like Constant Contact and MailChimp that provide email analytics to see if there might be an enterprise solution. If you want to email a newsletter and know, okay, did anybody open it? Did anybody read it? We don't know if there's a way we can do that throughout all of agriculture or extension or whatever. We're exploring that. At this point, we don't think there is. Walk it over. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and get in your steps. Right, Candy? <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, you're right. A lot of you don't qualify for the bulk, and that's the one we wanted to hit fairly hard because, like I already said, people assume you can't get the address corrections right. where we can get them corrected even before it gets mailed. So the bulk may not help you so much, but the business reply on RSVPs or surveys or anything where you need information back, mm -hmm. that is a good option. Mm -hmm. So if there are no more questions, I think we've covered okay. everything we mm -hmm. wanted to, awesome. didn't we? Yeah. So yeah. if there's no more questions or comments, I think we'll wrap it up. But please feel free to contact Diane or Sharon with any questions you think of later. The recording will be on the AgCom website under training and AgCom webinars. The next UR, or the URL will be in the next Let's Communicate. By the way, if you ever have topics you want to hear us cover in these webinars or in Let's Communicate, please let me know. Sometimes we're like, ah, I need stuff for Let's Communicate, help. <laughs> so if you have topics, let us know. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. joining us today. Bye. Bye.